Hello, you want your PC jack? Now, the RX 6950 XT in itself is a really powerful RDNA 2 card, and possibly one of the highlights of the previous generation of GPUs. And it even went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the RTX 3090 and the 3090 Ti. So nowadays, you could probably pick up one of these for quite a decent deal right now compared to the current generation of GPUs for both AMD and Nvidia. But what I wanted to go through today is exactly how well my card performs specifically when it comes to some performance tweaking for overclocks and undervolts. So today's video, we're going to see exactly how well my card performs when we overclock and undervolt it, and we'll test it out in a couple of my favourite games as well. So of course, before we get into any sort of overclocking or undervolting, the first thing we're going to have to do is establish a baseline. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Unigen Heaven 4.0 and go through a couple of rounds of benchmarking to see what kind of performance we're getting at stock. And then we'll start messing around with our overclocks, testing them in Unigen Heaven, and then once we reach the final overclock for our GPU, we'll then compare the score in Unigen Heaven 4.0 compared to our baseline score, and then we'll take things further with testing in a couple of games as well. So we've got our first score in our stock testing and so far we got for our FPS 196.9 and our score is 4959. Additionally while running this benchmark I've also had GPU Z running just so we can see exactly how well our card is performing at stock. So for our GPU clock you can see we're floating around the sort of 2600 near 2650 mark and then for our memory clock we're sitting at 2238 MHz. And our GPU temperature is looking not bad all things considered we're sort of sitting in the mid 60s which is absolutely fine, but potentially with some undervolting, we could even reduce that a little bit more. In regards to our GPU power draw, we're currently drawing just over 300 watts, about 325, so I reckon we could potentially drop that a little bit with some undervolting as well, but additionally, with some overclocking, we could increase that power limit, and we may see a little bit more of a higher power draw, but it shouldn't be anything too drastic. And as you can see for our voltage, the GPU sits at around 1.15 volts, uh, I reckon we can probably reduce that as well by a significant margin and still maintain decent performance. So what we'll do, we'll start getting into some actual overclocking and then we'll get back to benchmarking and seeing how well we're improving performance in Eugen Heaven 4.0. So to actually do some overclocking, you can use MSI Afterburner, but for AMD views, I quite like using the Adrenaline Driver in order to do mine. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in and we're going to start pumping up the core clock speed first and taking it from there. So all we're going to want to do is click on custom and go GPU tuning, select advanced control. And generally what I like to do when I'm setting my core voltage is you should keep a sort of 100 megahertz between your minimum and your maximum frequency. And that should help with stability. So all we're going to do, we're going to go about 10, 15 megahertz up at a time. We'll go for 10 just to be modest. So let's start with a very basic one. Let's go for... Let's go 2730, which would mean we want our minimum frequency to be 2630. And while we're in here, we're just going to enable all of this stuff just so we've got it all ready to go because we can take a look at all this afterwards. The other thing as well we'll do, we're going to max out our power limit. So we're going to go back into Unigen Heaven 4.0 and test this out and see how we're looking. And so we've been through our first benchmark pass with our very tiny overclock. And you can see there is a very slight improvement and it was stable. So thing that I'm going to do now is just go all the way through and push my overclock as much as I can and once I've reached my final score and settings I'll get back to you. Okay so I think we've reached our final overclock for our core clock specifically and after running through our benchmarks we're now at 205.8 for our FPS and our score has gone up to 5184. Now we did start at 196.9 for our FPS and then 4959 for our score so there has been a bit of a boost. And the settings I've used to actually get to that is I've set my core clock to 2825, which gets me to around just 2775, 2780 MHz in application. So that's about where I would expect, and uh, I'm quite happy with it as is at the moment. As you can see from GPU-Z, it has pushed up our power usage quite a lot. During the benchmark, and I've noticed that we're sitting around the sort of 360 to 380 watts range at times which is quite a lot and it is increasing the actual noise from our GPU and you can see it's running around 77% which is pretty audible and um, it may be even be picked up on the microphone. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move on to our memory clock next and see how far we can push that. But first impressions, I don't know if I'd be particularly happy running it at this sort of level of performance, depending on what it's like in-game. 
most notably because of the actual noise levels, and personally, I would rather run cooler and quieter. But that's the whole point of today, we're experimenting and trying to see exactly how well this card overclocks, but of course we will move on to own the vault in pretty soon. Okay, so moving on to our memory tuning, we're just basically going to go back into the adrenaline driver and go down to VRAM tuning and enable that. And we're also going to enable advanced control. And I think on this again, what you want to do is push about 10 megahertz at a time. So then what you could do, you could go in here and go for 22, 58, test that, see if it's stable and then move on. I'm going to work my way through now and see what's stable for me and then I'll get back to you on that. Okay, so I think I've reached what I would say is my final overclock with the 6950XT and I've managed to push my memory up to around 2400 MHz, which in application sits about 15 MHz below that, so as you can see in here we're currently around 2386 to 2390, it tends to fluctuate a little bit but it's just below that 2400 MHz mark, just like how it is when we're overclocking our core clock. And you can see on here we've got our FPS up to 209.2 and our score up to 5269. So even overclocking our memory does give us a little bit of a boost to be fair. So overall, this overclock is giving us some better performance in Unigen Heaven 4.0. We are going to have to test it in the games that I played to see whether it's stable in those as well because it could vary from application to application. But before we do that, instead we're going to roll back and we're going to start getting into some undervolting instead to see what sort of performance we can get more so in regards to our power, but if we can maintain our sock performance while using less power, that could be something that's pretty useful to have. So for our undervolting, instead what we're going to do is try and maintain our stock core clock and also drop the voltage as well and see just how far we get until we reach instability. So with our stock settings, our GPU will sort of hit in the rough 2600 MHz mark, which we'll set as a static amount in here just to make things a little bit more stable. So we're going to drop this down from 2719 to 2600. And then again, like we did with our overclock, we're going to make this 100 megahertz less and go for 2500. All we're going to do next then is again, we're going to increase our power limit, not necessarily to increase the power going to the card, but it should help us with the stability for our undervolt. So we're going to increase that as well. But now, we're going to start playing with the actual voltage for our GPU. So as you can see, at stock it's set to 1200 max. We're going to actually drop this down, about, again, about 10 millivolts at a time like you would on your core clock for your megahertz. And until we start seeing some instability and maybe crashing in Nugent Heaven, we'll know that's where the sweet spot is. So for now, we're going to drop this down, like I said on here. Let's go for 1190, and we can apply that. And then we'll go back into Unigen Heaven and start going through some tests. And as you can see, our core clock hasn't really changed too much. It's probably dropped down by about 50 megahertz or so. It's not a drastic amount. We could potentially boost that up a little bit. For the, but for the sake of today's video, we're going to set it to that because it's not going to cause too much of a loss to performance. And even from doing that tiny little bit of undervolting, you can see we're drawing a little less than what we were at stock, which was sitting around the sort of 320 watt range. As you see now, sort of 290s below around that sort of level. So we're going to go through. I'm going to see just how far I can push that as well as how much it's going to reduce our power usage and see if we're maintaining performance and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I think we found the sweet spot for our undervolting. I did manage to drop the voltage down to 1050 millivolts, but I've started to see some artifacting, so I bumped it back up a little bit to 1070 millivolts and things seem to be pretty stable all in all. And as you see in GPU-Z, it actually shows us being a little lower at 0.993 volts. So again, we do see a bit of a delta between the overclocking software and GPU-Z. So it seems to be a pretty decent result compared to what we were at at 1.2 volts. Now you may be looking at temperatures and thinking it doesn't look too drastically different to what it was as stock. But the thing to note is that our fan speed is quite low. I haven't done any custom fan curves, so this is just going off the stock settings for the fan. And the system is really quiet. But what is most impressive is taking a look at our GPU power draw, which as you can see has gone from around 320 watts all the way down to 240-250 watts range, which is a very impressive decrease to our power. And I don't have the score up here right now, but the score was around 193 for our FPS, and I'll pull up the score uh, in a screenshot, but, but the performance difference shouldn't be that noticeable in games, and for the benefits you're getting with reduced power and reduced noise levels, it seems like a worthwhile option to experiment with. So now we have both our overclock and our undervolts figured out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a couple of my favourite games, 
test them out and see if they're stable in game and see what performance difference we can see compared to stock and also where it's worth going for the overclock or the undervolt in game. I'm not going to test all these at 1080p all the way up to 4k, instead what I'll do, I'll just test it at my native monitor's resolution at 1440p, which should still give us a decent overview of what the performance difference is like. If you are looking for a more thorough, detailed review of the 6950 XT, specifically the Red Devil model, I'll link my friend Jerry's review down in the video description, as he's done a much more thorough job of reviewing the card and looking at multiple resolutions, so highly recommend checking his video out, but for today, we just going to see how it runs for me in my personal system and see whether it's worthwhile for you guys. So before we get into the results, one thing that's worth highlighting is that I actually did have to bump up the voltage a little bit on my undervolt. I was trying to push 1070 millivolts, but my games just kept crashing, so I had to pump it up a little bit more, up to 1100 millivolts, and it was rock solid after that, and the power draw was roughly about the same at around 250 watts max. Now looking at the results, there are certain gains from an overclock, but mostly I was more impressed with the actual performance maintained with the undervolt which also resulted in less power and also lower noise levels. Now, even if you did want to push this car to the absolute limit, the one thing I wasn't very keen on was the fact that the coil wine on my card in particular is pretty noticeable, and also once we pump it up that power draw, our fans are starting to ramp up pretty heavily and the noise is very noticeable. Of course, you may wear headphones which could avoid this issue, but if you're like me and you like to use speakers from time to time, it would be a bit of an issue. But I have to say, I am really impressed with how much performance this card can maintain, even with a really mild undervolt. And if I'm being totally honest, I'm actually leaning more towards using that undervolt than the overclock daily for my system. So I think I'm going to run with that undervolt at 2600 MHz and 1100 millivolts, and we'll see how I get on. I'll have to test it in a couple of other games as well. The games that I've shown off today aren't the only games I play, so it's very important that you verify the actual performance and stability of your overclocks and undervolts in multiple games. So I would highly recommend testing it in a lot more than what I've done today. But either way, I thought it was a pretty fun experiment to try out, and uh, it's nice to get back into some overclocking on the channel, as it's been uh, quite a while. So, uh, so let me know what you think of the RX 6950 XT and its overclocking and undervolted performance down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more myself and other like-minded target infusers, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the channel memberships where you can claim exclusive perks like early access to videos, including my dedicated undervolting and overclocking tutorial for this card, so uh, feel free to check it out. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.